So let's introduce our topic and our, our sisters for today. Chantal, we are so happy to have you here and to introduce you to the Sisterhood of Health. And as well as Dr. Carrie Taylor and Janice Vanderwood, who many of you know already. So this is our 12th Sisterhood of, of Higher Health. And we are now doing these sessions once a month. Through COVID, we started weekly, and it was just incredible to watch the community grow and to welcome in this space of online learning and connection and support. So I am, we've just continued to grow and, and fine tune our methods here, and I'm just very excited about this platform. Kira and I had brainstormed what our October theme would be, and you know, <laughs> Halloween, hormone, witchy, PMS, <laughs> it all started coming together, and Janice, I think I was messaging you as well in excitement for how this theme was, was uh, <laughs> coming together perfectly. So each month we have a theme, and we pair the theme with our three pillars of health, which are mindset, movement, and micronutrients. And we get a speaker, a fellow um, health professional or entrepreneur or wellness advocate who matches in line with one of those areas. So today, our mindset speaker is Chantal Bisson, author, actress, producer, and super mompreneur. It's been such a joy just anytime I run into Chantal. And our paths have crossed in a few different ways. So, um, yeah. And I, now I, uh, I just think it's very timely reading your book, how uh, raising, raising your kids without losing your cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very tongue in cheek because it cannot be done. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a play on words. <laughs> well, we can keep cool even when we don't have our cool. <laughs> exactly. And like, yeah. And then our, um, mindset movement our movement speaker is myself and i'm going to share with you my five minute bathroom routine that has um uh, has had a significant impact for me it didn't start in the bathroom but it can easily be done in your bathroom and there's some serendipitous uh um circumstances that will explain that further in my portion and for our micronutrient speaker today we have dr Kara taylor who is a hormone health advocate and she just has so much to share in the, in the realm of PMS and, and hormone balance and also parenthood. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I want to continue on to um, every week we pick three, sorry, I've got to get my screen share going here. Uh, oops. Zoom. No. How do I do this? How do I click forward? Seems to be, bear with me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is where my cool is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're much cooler than I am. I always yeah. need one of my daughters to help oh me. Oh <laughs> my God, just when you think you're in the groove, something, okay, so how do I move forward? Click, no, that's not working. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, there's an, Arrow down it there looks, that's for back. Pardon? It looks like you're on slide nine. Maybe that's why, so you can't go forward. Oh, thank you, Kira. Okay, yeah. I just quickly zipped through the presentation. <laughs> okay, thank you. And we're done. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we are. Woo! So you need sisters to help you through for the, yes. without losing your cool. <laughs> All right, so I've introduced our topics. And all right. We have a special sister joining us today, Janice Vanderwood, Human Potential Coach. And I've selected Janice to read, well, Janice advocates for priming, priming your day, which maybe she can say a few words too. And in our sisterhood, we prime the theme by picking three words that match in line with that theme. They're power words. They're words to hold at the forefront of your mind as you go through your day or your week or your month. So Janice, can you say a little bit to us in, uh, from your expertise of priming and then uh, yeah. share with us your three words? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, priming your day. Priming your day is, is really, it's, it's about, um, you know, what are the things that you need in your day that you want in your, in your day to create the platform for things to go relatively, um, relatively smoothly so you can respond in a way that, that doesn't create, um, you know, overreactions. It's not that these things aren't going to come, but that might mean your bathroom routine, Tara, like you, like you mentioned, you know, starting with, 
whatever you're going to talk about. I won't, I won't uh, give it away, but um, you know, what is that ritual for you every morning that's going to create that platform in, in order for you to be able to respond to things that are, that are going to come at you during the day because they will, right? Where there, everything is, is, you know, life is unexpected, right? Um, not just during this time. So that given that that being said, um, these words might seem a little bit unconventional. Um, but whatever is going to take place during the day, it, the first word I wanted to talk about was welcoming. So welcoming whatever is coming your way, welcome, welcoming whatever is in that moment. So welcoming is the first word. The second word is acknowledging. So acknowledging what's there, right? And, and it's the hardest thing to do when it's, when it's difficult, right? When it's, when it's uncomfortable or it's messy, right? So acknowledge what's there. And then the third word is acceptance. Acceptance of what is in that given moment. So accepting um, does not mean, there's a sort of a misconception about what accepting is. So it does, does it mean I just accept things and not have to do anything about it? Or, or just don't really care. No, it, it, it isn't. It's accepting what is in that moment, especially the, un, the the discomfort, right, of what might come up, and then you can take skillful action. To you know, you can figure out what uh, you'd like to do about it, right? How you want to respond and and not react. So so welcome, accept, and sorry, welcome, acknowledge, and accept. And, and, and when it comes to PMS, parenting, and, um, and hormones, those can be, you know, fully um, applied, right? Because PMS is uncomfortable. All the emotions that come up with PMS, right? They're, 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 not, they're not pleasant, right? But when we welcome those feelings, acknowledge them, and accept them, then we can do what we need to do or do what we want to do. Like maybe take some time for ourselves or take a nice warm bath or whatever that, whatever that means for you. Um, and the same with parenting, right? I mean, like Chantel, you, you'll you know more than anybody. It's, it's um, and you'll, you'll talk about this is, you know, when you, when you feel like you're going to lose your cool, right? It's, it's when we try and discard those feelings that come up for us right? It, we it, we want to resist that, right? You know what? No, I should be acting a little bit better. Or I, or I, or I you know, it, it, it's all of that. Well, it's actually really about welcoming those uncomfortable emotions, acknowledging, and then accepting and making skillful action. So with everything, parenting, hormones too, hormones give, can give us some, some trouble, right? Sometimes as Kira will talk about. So, so again, it, it's, um, uh, yeah, um, that's, Perfect. that's, I don't want to take up any more time, but yeah. You no, know, I love that. And I've always really um, resonated with the quote and it comes up with a, in a lot of my client visits, what you resist persists. Mm -hmm. And we need practice and support to just be present and to accept it. And, and also we've spoken before in, in our sisterhood that it's a, um, an episode or irritability or, or a reaction is 90 seconds, right? Is it 90, 60 or 90 seconds? So it's, it's 60 sitting in that discomfort for that amount of time. And so welcoming that in, acknowledging it, not pushing it away. Uh, it's because those feelings are allowed to be there and they're not bad. They help guide us. Yeah. And when we don't acknowledge them, they never leave. Yeah. We don't welcome them. We don't acknowledge them. They won't leave. But mm -hmm. I think what happens is that, well, I know what happens is that we feel that if we allow them, they will overwhelm us, right? Or they won't, they won't, they won't stop. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's frightening. But when we actually do acknowledge them and okay, there it is, you know, here it is. I accept that I'm angry or whatever, whatever the, the emotion is going to be or embarrassed or helpless, then it can leave. Mm -hmm. And and the most important important part of all this is skillful action, right? It's it's a skillful action after acceptance, and sometimes the action is inaction. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for you to do. So perfect. Love those words. So okay. welcome, acknowledge, and accept. Those are our guiding words for today and for this week and for October. So thank you, Janice. You're welcome. And. Oh no, it's doing it again. 
sorry. How do I move? Okay, Kira, don't oh. be mad at me. <laughs> That's a great photo. It is a great photo. Oh, I think it's cute. Back. I had to, I had to put so this in because joy. I just love this picture. Yeah, it's so full of joy. I want to be messing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. This is how we want to feel. So we yeah. spoke with the words, and now this is the feeling. <laughs> Okay, so Dr. Kira Taylor, I just feel so fortunate to know her and how our paths crossed and how she joined the team at Higher Health way back while she was a student, um, where I just looked at her, she came to shadow for the day, and I said, Kira, I need help. <laughs> and then it just blossomed from there, and Kira had a baby just as she was graduating from the naturopathic college, and then paths always circle back as they're meant to, and so... I, you know, I'm just so grateful that that we we kept the connection going and, and circled back. And now Dr. Kara Taylor is a naturopath at Higher Health and an IV practitioner. Mm -hmm. And today she's going to be sharing her hormone insights. We're going to be discussing Chase Tree Berry, one botanical you definitely want to know about in terms of PMS and mood fluctuations and cycle regularity, as well as sleep difficulties and skin concerns. So I'm just introducing Kira now, and then um, in terms of myself, I will be speaking about hydrotherapy, morning priming, present moment awareness, hormone and neurotransmitter balance, and as mentioned, my five-minute morning routine. Chantal Visson. So Chantal is an actor, producer, um, uh, author, and a, a mompreneur, as I mentioned, and she has put her memoirs of parenthood into, well, the continued memoirs, I guess, into her book, <laughs> Raising Your Kids Without Losing Your Cool. And so in our talk with Chantel, we are going to be discussing how to remain flexible within your ideals of how it should go, how to give your kids real life tools they can take into adulthood, why your partner needs to remain your number one focus, and why it's so important to go on dates, have sex, and keep the fires burning. And this is just a glimpse of Chantel's book. Don't we love that it's a pink cover? <laughs> it's so perfect. You're matching our branding for the sisterhood, Chantel. <laughs> I must have known. I must have known this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's start in. And Chantel, you are our first speaker. So let's just get the party started with mindset. Let's do it. Okay. Well, I think um, what I've learned from being a mom is how important it is to understand that nothing is permanent in your relationship, in your parenting role, uh, your relationship with your kids. The, the real problem I experienced for myself was that sort of something would go wrong in the day or in an instant with one of the girls. And I would immediately get back on my heels and feel like, oh my God, I really blew that. What have I done? How are they going to turn out? This is like the end. I mean, as moms, we know inherently that there's a lot um, at stake in raising a human. And so what we tend to do is we can hyper focus on those little things that hiccup in a day of being a mom and we hold on to it. So it's kind of interesting that we're all here together because Janice, um, what you're saying is welcoming you know, welcome that hiccup in your mom journey with your child, acknowledge it, see it for what it is. Don't blow it out of proportion. Don't go, you know, 15 years down the road and, you know, think you, you've ruined your child in that one instance of blowing it or losing your cool. And then just accept that these things happen and it's going to happen. And it's going to happen regularly throughout your relationship with your child that you're going to misstep, misspeak, um, overreact to something or underreact to something. And I think the beautiful thing about being a mother is understanding that none of those missteps are actually the things that are going to quote unquote ruin your children. And I think that as women and as a sisterhood, we need to support one another more in our parenting journey. And, and it's really disheartening to me as a mom who's way on the other side, like my eldest is going to be 32, my middle girl is going to be 30 and my baby's 24. And, you know, and I'm witnessing now how women on the internet just shame and punish women for every little thing that they do. You know, everybody's got an opinion about how somebody else is doing it wrong and how they might be doing it better. And I think we all just need to step back 
take a breath and realize that there's way more power in raising this next generation of our society if we do it unified if we do it together if we all are coming at it from love and understanding that it's not our role to judge another mom and her parenting journey or her parenting techniques you know yannick and i and i say this in the book we chose to spank we were part of a non uh non-discriminate discriminatory church so everybody was welcome um and one of the things that they really held on to was spare the rod spoil the child now our discipline was very, very structured and, you know, we didn't lash out and it was, you know, we had three house rules, you followed them. And if you didn't follow them, there was a conversation that was had. We would talk to the girls and have communication about, well, what, what do you think happened there? What choice did you make that you feel like you could have made a different choice if you were going to, you know, stay within the structure of the rules? And we were like, don't lie, don't respect, disrespect each other. So what we ended up finding was that in that structured discipline, we actually didn't end up having to spank them all that much because there was an understanding of expectation because the reality is, is that whether we like it or not, the world operates in a certain way, you know, and it, 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 you win and you lose. That's it. You know, uh, not everybody gets a ribbon, not everybody gets the promotion, not everybody else, not everybody's going to get the six figure job, seven figure job, fancy cars, cottage, all the things. And I think when we, when we, do not structure our ha our own home in the understanding that whether we agree with it or not, that the world does operate on a certain level. Um, so sort of that, <laughs> to that acceptance of the way that things are, we set them up for failure. And I'm not saying that when you raise your child, you should um, bow down to things that you don't agree with in society. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that we do a great disservice if we raise our children to believe that you know, if they have you by their side, doing their homework with them, fighting their battles with them at school and on the school ground, that you're always going to be there. Emotionally, yes, you will always be there with your child, but you're not going to university with them. So as parents, it's our primary role to equip them with what they need so that they can go on the world and fight their own battles. If they feel like a prof didn't give them a mark that they really believe they earned and they warranted, they're going to know how to go to that prof and with a level head say to them, hey, this is what I think. This is how I see it. Can you explain to me where you're coming from and why you did what you did? And then they have the ability to debate, negotiate, and fight for the things that they really, really want to earn. If we do it all for them, first off, the stuff you give to somebody, it doesn't really matter all that much, right? Like, really, unless you fight for it yourself, like if you would just been given your degrees to be doctors, you'd be like, oh, that was, that, that took nothing out of me, but it's the blood, okay. sweat, tears, <laughs> discipline. And then, you know, you go forward with that. And it also gives you a sense of pride. Like this is something I earned on my own. Like this is something that I did. So in my book, I, I, I focus on birth to 10. And the, the reason I don't go past the t age 10 is because, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. It's very, very different reading bedtime stories to a child and talking about, oh, this is my vagina, this is my penis, than it is like drugs, cutting, sex, blowjob parties. Like th these are two separate books. I don't want to freak young parents out with like talking all that nitty gritty stuff. But the reality is the essence is the same. Be humble with your children. Own when you've you've blown it, lost your cool, because it's going to happen. Explain to them where you were coming from and why you overreacted or why you made the choice that you made. Have open dialogue and conversation. Trust that your kid gets it. Trust that your kid loves you. Trust that your child really, really wants to know you and understand you. And when we are raw and authentic with our children, it teaches them that it's okay for them to be raw and authentic, that they don't have to live this life of suppressing their emotions, suppressing their feelings, being like confused and upset because they've never seen mommy lose their cool. They've never seen daddy lose their cool. They've never ever witnessed the fall down, get back up. So I really, really stress that a lot in my book. It's like, it's so important to allow your children to not only witness your shortcomings and your failures, but witness how you put it all back together and stand up and how you're stronger and you're better for it. Because through osmosis, they're seeing that that's okay. And that when that happens to them, they are also going to be okay. So in my book, I talk a lot about not rushing through the, the, the not, I will, 
the ugliness, right, of, of, of being emotional beings and, and not rushing through and acting like none of this is happening. No, 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 you're good, you're good, here's your ribbon. No, 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 you're good, I'm gonna talk to that teacher for you. No, 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 you're being bullied, you know, or you're, you are a bully. It's really, really, the key to being a great parent is being an open and available parent. Somebody that your kid knows they can come to with anything at any time, that you're always gonna be there for them and you're not gonna video it and put it on the internet for your 15 minutes of fame. Can I, can I, can I say something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what you're saying, uh, Chantal, and, and something that really struck with me when you were talking about you know, the, the three rules of your household, it was like, it, it made me think of a term structured fluidity. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so fluidity within that structure because every child requires something different, right? 100%, and, and yeah. You've got these. You've got the structure, and then there's there's fluidity within that structure, and um, and especially with all of this anxiety and 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 yeah. I mean, there isn't a household without it, right? Right. Um, I think what you're saying too is that structure does provide some kind of a framework for that anxiety. It makes makes kids feel safe. Well, yeah. and that's exactly. And I think that we've kind of gotten away from that understanding that, um, and because you know. I'm 51. So, you know, I, and my mom is, I'm first generation Canadian. So she had a German mom and a Romanian father. So we were kind of, we were very brought up very like, no, autocratically. And she was even less autocratic than her parents. So what I think is what it's happening with this new generation of parents is that because we witnessed that, or we maybe were raised that way, that we throw it all away. You know, we throw structure all away. We throw all discipline away and we have too much openness that actually causes anxiety and insecurity because kids need boundaries. You know, they need like a cocoon. They need, uh, you know, and I do this a lot in my book too, if you, Tara, if you read it, I, I refer back to kids and puppies, right? I mean, it, we're all, when we get a puppy, we don't all just go like, I know, I got this. I know, you know, we ask the breeder, well, what do you do? What do you feed them? How do they sleep? Crate, no crate. Should I take them to puppy class? And we're willing to take this input and go and do these things with our, our pups. But then kind of with our kids, we're like, they'll figure it out. No, they know what they need. How can they possibly know what they need? And not in an autocratic way, I'm your parent. I know what's best for you, but in I love you, and I want what's best for you, and I want you to feel safe, and I want you to know that inside these walls, you're loved, but you're also gonna be challenged. Like, I'm not gonna let you just raise up to be a little asshole. Like, I have an expectation of you that I want you to go out in the world and not only function, but I want you to flourish, and I want you to make the world a better place in a very real way of giving them the tools of how to be an awesome human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Chantel, can you clarify the three rules? Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been so long, I'd have to crack open my book. But um, we had, okay, so our three rules were pretty much all the same, but in a, it layered in a different way. So we didn't allow for lying. We, we just don't go for that. I mean, I figure if, if a child starts out with little lies, that's gonna, that, that's a character issue. Like if a kid feels okay with lying to you and knows that they're pulling one over on you and they've gotten away with lying, that, that will carry on into their, their lives. And I'm not saying like, don't story tell, don't have an imagination, that's one thing. But when you're asked a direct question, you know, and you get a flat out lie, that was one of the things that we just, we didn't go for. And I say in my book that it's super important that we all come from different backgrounds. We all have our own baggage that we bring forward that um, affect us and that we kind of are operating from. And I'm not saying about putting these things on your child. I'm saying that when you are two people from two different backgrounds, you don't want to give them so many house rules that it's gonna, it's, it's overwhelming. So as a couple, as a partnership, it's ideal to sit down before baby comes, mm -hmm. sit down and really discuss what your non-negotiables are. Like when you were out in the world as two grown adults, 
what you character traits that you maybe see in coworkers or, or in global leaders that you're just like, no, I do not want a, a grown human to go out and represent not only us, but themselves in that way. So for us, we just, we're not big fans of people that are, you know, dishonest. So that was a big one for us. And then no disrespect. And what we mean not with no disrespect wasn't like, hey, they couldn't tell us that they didn't want to do something or they didn't agree with something. We meant like when they would get into it with each other, they would name call, you know, and they would get dirty or hit below the belt and they would attack one another or attack us with their emotions raw and on high in a very, in a way that was deter, it was set up for them to kind of come out on top and win by completely decimating the other person's center, you know, their heart center by being mean and, and, and bullying essentially. So when they would behave like that, that was, you know, punishable with like, hey, you know, you, you said that to her, it, you can see it really hurt her heart. And that was not okay. Like, let's have a conversation about this and why you did it. And, and then, okay, let's go little, you know, three pats on the bum, big cuddles, big love. What are you going to do differently next time? How do you think even if you're upset and you think she was wrong? So, you know, all our discipline with the girls was very, very, um, was very, it was mindful. Do you know, and it was very rare when, cause we knew what those rules were and they knew what they were. It was very rare that anybody, them or us ended up having, having a conflict in the family that resulted in like flying off the handle. You know, I mean, we've all, I mean, I won't say never, but it was rare. Um, mostly in their teen years, it became easier to fly off the handle because, you know, you don't spank them past a certain age. Um, so I think what ended up happening is it allowed us all to understand that um, for every negative action that we choose to make, there is a consequence. And I think a lot of parents have stopped teaching this to their children, that the reality is, like I said, whether we agree with how the world operates or not, and I know we're all here doing our best to change the world and make it more inclusive and make it more tolerant and make it more rooted in love. The reality is it still operates the way it operates. And you, if you send a child out into the world that's just used to flying off the handle and telling, you know, calling people names when they don't get their way or when things aren't going their way, um, you're, you're, you're really setting them up for a, they're going to be lonely people because nobody's going to want to hang out with them. Right. So, um, yeah. And I, I can't for the life of me remember the third one, but it was all sort of around character traits and, and, and ways that we wanted to empower them to be able to stop, take stock, examine the situation around them what was happening to them or what was happening around them and how then within that they were going to react to it. You know, they could choose to react by flying off the handle or being cruel or being, or they could choose to react to just like take it in process, go through it without being belligerent or without doing any damage. So for, for our girls, it was really about, setting and 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 you know this we're going back almost 32 years but for us you know so the times were very different girls were still girls and boys were boys so we wanted to make sure that our girls would be able to go out into the world as females and lead on any level do you know that they would be able to have skills and tools so that they wouldn't run emotionally rampant without being able to clearly communicate an issue they were having or an upset they were having. So we wanted to raise them, you know, if, you know, again, it's probably a little old fashioned to say it in today's times, but in our mindset back then, 32 years ago, we wanted to raise them to be able to stand up as women in a very, very male world. And I mean, I think we're still seeing that now, you know, we don't have nearly enough female leaders. So um, it was very conscientious that we wanted our girls to be able to fight and, and communicate clearly and stand their ground in a way that empowered them within their, their femininity, but also not be pushovers. Mm -hmm. 
Janice, I know you want to say something. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, I love what you're saying. And um, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if, if and, I, and I can only imagine that, you know, your kids learn by example, you know, you know, like laying out the rules is great, but modeling that behavior has probably more of a, 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 of a, well, it does have a bigger impact, right? So they, they learn from you guys, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm imagining. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and I think that's important too. And, and, and I, t I talk about this a great deal in my book is like humility as a parent, you know what I mean? Like in, in our partnership too, I think a lot of times is that we, we get trapped or caught in the way it should be or the way we should feel or the way we should react to something that we we forget that we're still our own person right and that well i'm not i'm not what i see on social media or i'm not what i see on tv or i'm not even what i see how i'm not who my girlfriends are in a situation if they have a conflict with a partner or conflict with their children i think the real real important thing with anything any way we live our lives in my opinion is that we just fully embrace and acknowledge and love the uniqueness that each of us, you know, each of us are, you know, our individuality and the way our minds think and the way we love and the way we fight and the way we, you know, get discouraged and the way we break down and the way we rise up and, and just really wrapping your arms around yourself and, and, and wrapping your arms around your children. Cause I had, I have three, all the same sex and they couldn't be more different. And they were raised the, you know, exact same way, same rules, same structure. And they all had their own experiences within it because ultimately, you know, they are who they are. And when you're parenting, you've got to remember that, like, you know, not every, every thing is going to work for the same child. You know, we have one that was very affectionate, very cuddly and loved to like have, you know, full sob fests in your arms and just like be held and, and that, and we had another one was like, N -n -n -n, just a little, I'm, I'm upset. Just, just a little, just a little. Okay. That's good. That's good. I feel good. I no, you know, where's the other one would be like, ah, oh, take me and hold me and love me. And then, you know, our other girl was like, no, I'm good. I got this. Do you want a hug? No. Right. So, um, and, and, and as parents, we've got to remember, like, don't get offended. Don't get offended if your kid doesn't want to hug or cuddle or, you know, it, it just, remember that you're dealing with somebody who's their own person at all times you're dealing with an individual and you're your own person too a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah yeah exactly and then yeah your partner whether it's dad and mom or mom and mom or dad and dad it's like your partner is their own person too and they're going to react and 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 feel things and operate in a way that yeah. like you know we're all raised differently so it's, it's just about mutual respect and, and humility and, and trying not to take it personally while you're in there, trying to build a family yeah. of all these so different... It sounds, yeah, it sounds very much like the key is a context. You have a context and that within that you have guidelines and rules, but it's open to interpretation. But you said simplify it, bring it down to three guiding lights, which is, you know, same as our three words here today in a way, <laughs> yeah. right? So you have that structure and context to flourish from and yeah. some words that I'm, I'm big on those intention words but when you were speaking things that came out were humble being humble and humility trust honesty right yeah. if you're honest and true and authentic to how you're feeling everybody understands mm -hmm. and actually we have a you know this we have a staircase at our office call it yes. the the the, the the stairway to health and there's guiding <laughs> words on each level right and the second word that sometimes i cringe at and i actually wonder Did, should i have had that the should word um it's apologize and i question myself on it and i've actually had conversations with other people and you know i actually really love that word and i think it's really important that we need to yeah. authentically be able to communicate and say and you know if we lose our cool and say this is what's happening and then for another person to answer and so it takes a lot of courage and honesty yeah. and humility to say that so that's just one word but um yeah I, I think i would like to encourage that everybody from this session thinks of their guiding um rules for home what and yeah great that they're all character building rules what are your rules as a person so yeah, yeah. Well, and I think too, at the end of the day, right, it's just, it's about 
we don't own our children, right? They're gifts to us. They've been given to us. They're on loan to us. And, and we've been entrusted to raise them and to love them and to nourish them and to form them. And I think that it's so easy. And, and Janice, you said it perfectly when we were talking amongst ourselves before we started this panel. You said it perfectly today. Is like you witness this mother and child in the ravine walking leisurely, just being together. And I think that when we're in the thick of it, like we're exhausted and, and it just, you know, they're teething or they're not sleeping or they have digestion, whatever might be going on. And you just feel like it is never going to end. And you sort of want to hit fast forward. The reality is, is that it goes so quickly. Like I cannot believe I have a 32 year old. I'm still 32. So it freaks me out. I don't know how that happened, but you know what I mean? Like, it's literally like you you're in it and then all of a sudden you're out of it. It, it, it goes that quickly. Yeah. So if there's anything I can impart to anybody who's listening here, who's really in the thick of the sleepless nights and the, you know, figuring out, trying to learn about your new person, or you're even like getting towards double digits and you're getting some sass now. And this is like, not the child you thought you knew. And you're just like, I just want to get through it here. Have a iPhone here, have an, you know, a device here, go play games on, you know, on the TV for hours on end. The one thing that we all know for certain that there is not enough of is time. And we also know we can't dial back. We can't go back in time and say, oh, I wish I could have. So if there's anything as a mom way on the other side of it can share with any of you who are listening right now who are seriously like dying and thinking there's just no way in hell I'm getting through this. I'm here to tell you 100,000% you will. You will, you will, you will. You've got this entirely give yourself grace but also take the time what whatever stage of your mothering journey you're in right now take the time to be in it and to enjoy every minute of it i'm not saying you got to be rainbows and sunshine and happy and upbeat up all the time because we're going to probably talk about hormones and how that's not possible <laughs> but i'm just saying that really really remember when it really gets gross and it's really like eh, i don't why did i do this just remember it doesn't last forever and that's good, but it's also not great because you're going to be so on the other side one day being like, shoot, I wish I'd gone for that walk in the ravine or I wish I'd snuggled and read that book that I've already read 10 times an 11th time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing segue into the hormones mm -hmm. portion with Dr. Kira and just two more words that came up with what you said <laughs> and let's write them down. Grace and time. You know, I'm a new mom and, and it really stresses me out when people say it goes so fast. And I know like there's this fear of, oh my God, okay, I've got to enjoy this right now because it's, you know, she's going to be 16 or 32 one day. Um, and so that gift of time and slowing and present moment, I just, that's the best message. Yeah. So Dr. Don't Kira, beat yourself up on it. Don't pardon? beat yourself up while you're don't beat yourself up while you're acknowledging that it's gonna go fast. Yeah, accept, yeah. welcome, acknowledge. Yeah. Take the action exactly. steps. Go read that book the tenth time. Oh, um, so Dr. Kira, we want to learn all about Chase Tree and what we <laughs> know about this amazing botanical. Bless you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so um, I'm really excited to be chatting about, this is probably one of my favorite topics, um, hormones, mood, PMS. Um, we're going to talk about why um, part of the month is such a struggle um, for so many of us and what we can do so that it's not that way. And so I'll be highlighting the amazing herb chase tree, which is just an amazing herb for women's health. Um, so to start, I just wanted to really briefly go over the four different phases of the menstrual cycle. Um, and that's because a lot of people think of the menstrual cycle as just the period, but really it's hormonal fluctuations that occur throughout a monthly-ish cycle. And this will give us kind of a good perspective on why we don't feel the same all the time. And so the first phase is just the menstrual phase. If you count your, if you track your cycle, it'll be like the first day of uh, bleeding. Um, it's anywhere from three to seven days. And at this time, all of our hormones are pretty low. Then we move into the follicular phase, um, and this is when our hormones start increasing. So the signaling really starts from the brain, like everything's starting at the brain level. Um, there's signals from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland, uh, FSH and LH, so those are hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone is signaling to the ovary, 
to pick a uh, follicle that's going to start growing and producing estrogen. So in this follicular phase, estrogen is a main hormone um, that's being produced. We hardly have any progesterone in our body at this time. Then when that, we get to the end of that phase, um, estrogen is going to peak, which causes a luteinizing hormone from the uh, pituitary gland to signal to, for the egg to be released, and that's ovulation. And ovulation is like the main event of the menstrual cycle, really. Um, this is the third phase. It's the shortest one, like it's only two to three days. And then we move into the final phase, which is the luteal phase. That's about two weeks between ovulation and menstruation. Um, and in this phase, that's when the uh, cells that are left over produce progesterone. So progesterone is our dominant hormone in this phase. Um, we're also producing um, estrogen as well. So this is really like the high hormone phase. Um, and this is the time I think a lot of us are really familiar with, right? Like feeling uh, hormonal, feeling PMS-y, like PMSing. Um, and, you know, PMS, like premenstrual syndrome, is really a collection of different symptoms, both physical um, and psychological, that we can experience. So like breast tenderness, headaches, bloating, water retention, as well as um, the, like moodiness, irritability, maybe rage, um, maybe being like depressed or weepiness. And, you know, really from looking at that hormonal shift that I was saying, like we don't, women don't work on the like 24 hour hormonal cycle that men work on. So we cannot expect ourselves to feel the exact same way every day of the month. Like we are really fluctuating in more of this monthly cycle. And when we're in this luteal, this premenstrual phase, um, when our hormones are higher, um, it's causing different effects in our body. So progesterone is a hormone that acts on our GABA receptors. So GABA is like our relaxing inhibitory neurotransmitter. So progesterone is really um, supposed to be our like calming, relaxing hormone, whereas estrogen acts on our serotonin receptors. So it's more of our like upbeat um, positivity. That's kind of what our serotonin uh, neurotransmitter is like. Um, and so because of this window of time, I actually really, I loved this, like we were kind of talking about this is like a witchy, this, or this little chat with Halloween coming up, but I like thinking that of this as like our witchy time of the month. Like I think it's, it's a cute reference because it's almost like to me, I'm imagining this like um, witchy, feminine, like intuitive kind of power that we have. So it's almost like, can we reframe this premenstrual time to when our, we're a bit more intuitive, we can be a bit more in tune with what's really pissing us off in our life, right? Like when we can notice, and Janice even alluded to this too, like thinking about the things that are actually triggering you at this time of the month, like actually taking note of what's really driving you crazy, what's irritating you. Um, maybe it's a sign of boundaries that you need to set up, you know, whether that's um, at, like at work or at home or with family, um, maybe it's self-care that you, you're just not taking uh, care of yourself. You're not nourishing yourself, moving enough. Um, our, our monthly period, because it's this whole monthly cycle and this premenstrual time can really be almost like a, a monthly report card for us of how things have been going in the last few months from a stress perspective, from a self-care perspective. So it can really help guide that. And it's really, so because of that, we need that good progesterone level. Um, so because it has that calming, relaxing effect on us and progesterone and estrogen also really work in balance. So with progesterone, um, sorry, estrogen is more stimulating. So it like stimulates the endometrial lining. It stimulates the breast tissue um, and progesterone helps to balance that out. Um, so we need to make sure that we're having a good ovulation. We're producing a good amount of progesterone that's in balance um, with estrogen to help like smooth out these transitions to help with this um, premenstrual phase, as well as I think it's important to try and like reframe the conversation about how we can take care of ourselves better um, in this time. And there is, it's interesting because there is, there is going to be a subset um, of women where progesterone really doesn't actually have that desired effect. So for some people that increase in estrogen can, or sorry, progesterone can really um, make that time of the month really, really difficult. So when things are like, you know, when I'm talking about PMS and then like PMDD, um, you know, when, it, when the, that, like in that window, 
the quality of life really becomes impa impacted. Um, we really need to look deeper at that. Um, and that's why I want to chat, chat about Taste Tree, which is an amazing herb, so botanical um, for so many women's health conditions. Um, Chase Tree is also called Vitex castus agnus. Um, and uh, Chase Tree is really helping with the communication between the brain and the ovaries, so that brain communication. Um, Chase Tree has been studied a ton in the literature. It really helps with uh, these PMS symptoms, so both the physical symptoms that we experience and those mood um, and psychological symptoms that we can experience, cycle regularity, so having that good ovulation every single month, so the cycle regularity, which um, is, is important for fertility, um, Chase Tree can be amazing there, as well as um, sleep issues, skin issues, anything that's kind of happening like cyclically that we know has this hormonal component, Chase Tree can really help um, with that ovulation and that production of progesterone. Um, so Chase Tree has, I mean, plants are amazing. Like they have so many constituents in them that I think act synergistically to have that therapeutic effect on us. With Chase Tree, we're looking at the diterpenes, um, which actually act on dopamine receptors in the brain, which helps to lower prolactin. So prolactin is another hormone that is produced by the pituitary gland. It's like our lactation hormone, you can think of it, but it also plays a role with um, ovulation and it plays a role with um, stress and actually increase in, and then that can affect ovulation. So, um, so Chase Tree is really helping to promote that regular ovulation and promote that production of progesterone. Um, and I, I think that's like, that's what it's all about. You know, it's thinking about how can we best support our body? So how can we make sure that um, we are reframing that time, you know, that premenstrual time before um, we get our period when we are most, we can kind of access that internal wisdom. Um, almost like, I mean, it can be difficult to access it. And sometimes there's um, triggers that come up. But if we let the triggers be our teacher, which we've kind of been talking about, like, you know, like the words were at the beginning, you know, welcome when you notice yourself getting irritated by something like welcoming that in, um, acknowledging it, accepting it, and then asking, you know, what does this have to show me? Like, what boundaries do I have to put up? How can I take better care of myself? Um, and then remembering the brilliance of Chase Tree and helping with our cycle regularity, helping with that, you know, robust monthly ovulation, um, which is going to help with that progesterone production um, for that calming, relaxing effect in the hormones. <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. Just in case, just in case anybody who follows me is, you know, has signed up and is watching and is on the other side of yeah. uh, menstruation because yeah, I have yeah. menopause. Um, yeah. Is this something that would benefit us? Because right now I'm on uh, bioidentical estrogen and progesterone um, and mm -hmm. I do progesterone and cycle day one to 12 yeah. of what would be my, you know, uh, 28 day cycle. So is this something that somebody like me could still benefit from this sort of herb? I love that you asked that because I wanted to touch on this as well, that chase tree can be really helpful in more of that perimenopausal transition. So that like transition period from menstruating into menopause, because it's really helping with that um, brain ovarian like ovulation um, communication. So in that time when women are still like the, the communication isn't great and, but we are still kind of not yeah. regular, like not um, ovulating regularly. It can help with like mood changes and things like that. Um, but then getting post menopause, it's not going to help as much because it's really working on that like brain ovarian okay. connection. So in terms of supporting hormones, like you know, um, the like taking bioidentical hormones or having bioidentical hormone support can help with um, maintaining all of the like juiciness that hormones give us, um, <laughs> and then supporting and then support. Supporting you, but supporting your like lifestyle, um, right. support doing the self care, like all of that kind of stuff. Because you will still be on like even a lot of women like when they pass through menopause, they can still feel this monthly cycle. Even I mean, going with oh, the yeah. moon, right? Like the moon too, with that that kind of follows um, our rhythm with the new moon being like um, the beginning of the cycle, like um, and then the full moon being the ovulation, like full moon. Um, yeah. So people do feel themselves still cycling. Oh yeah, because I'm sometimes I'm like, why am I still crazy? I, I'm done. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm the place I'm hey, that's the second book. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll do the like, chain one first. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. The chain. I want the chain one. I need that one. I mean, my, yeah. mine's only three, but I'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can get yeah. a head start yeah. in there too. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's, it's then kinda, I'll do the I'll do the menopause one. <laughs> it's like Chase Tree is the the first book. And progesterone is the second book. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Kira, I love the reframing. I love mm. the reframing of, of all of that, the witchiness and, and, and whatnot. And, and I, um, I think it was Dr. Christian Northrup that said, mm. you know, um, it's an opportunity, right? It's actually divine. Every month we have an opportunity to sort of get, like dig into our unfinished business, yeah. right? And it's almost like a second puberty that's happening. Mm -hmm. right the things that you, you didn't deal with in that in that sort of time frame they keep coming up until you do you know they you know you do deal with them and mm -hmm. and it, it is a great opportunity every month even though it doesn't feel like it <laughs> it it, it's, it's, in it. It's, it's there for you yeah you to welcome and acknowledge yeah welcome and, and acknowledge. can we talk about just can we mention wicked the play have you seen it yeah wicked mm -hmm. it's amazing because it's I love what, how Kira, you brought it all together too, from the energetic to body and mind. And how, how often has your medical doctor sat with you and gone through your menstrual cycle and all the hormones? And did you know that your hormones actually stimulate serotonin, dopamine, and GABA? Like, this is really essential to know. So then yeah. Kira, how you brought the energetics in and Wicked is basically, I, I have to go back and look at the names, but there's a good witch and a bad witch. And the mm -hmm. good witch is the tip, no, sorry, the the bad witch, the, the, the vision of the bad witch is actually the good witch, the, the misunderstood witch. The, you know, and, and getting shivers just talking about it, it's a brilliant play. And it makes you really understand why the wicked witch became wicked, but she's really hurting inside and just wants to be understood. And so this second half of our cycle, you've even helped me see that it's such a time to tap into your intuition, to really reflect and, and acknowledge. And so amazing this conversation we're having with the four of us. I think we might go a little over. Oh, and so- um, <laughs> well, I think Zoom cuts you off if you go over that. No, right? not, a, I, not, not on this one, but if anybody has to go, we will try to keep it to the hour. Um, so Kira, words that came up for your portion. So being in tune, intuition, boundaries, amazing. Um, communication and not just communication with others and with yourself but with your brain and your body and mm -hmm. so that overall so just think about the word communication and all the levels that, that you communicate and consistency I know our menstrual cycle is really a a, um, a pattern and a flow and, and there is a consistency to it that reflects our health and when it's out of balance inconsistencies come up so really looking at that and then you also said at the very end brilliance I love that word and juicy so <laughs> um, and so I want to make sure I share my bathroom routine with you I think mm, that's yes. also very important to give you present um, easy tools to use and I'm coming at speaking to this from a significant background of anxiety leading to full-blown depression many many times and I, one of the things I felt was that nobody ever sought to understand why or to talk with me or to ask me questions or to really help me sit in it. So, you know, things write themselves and my whole profession is about this and, and teaching people, myself included, how to sit in it, how to bring back balance. And um, so actually an interesting story, how I met Janice, aside from, uh, you know, my yoga studio, which is a really wonderful community. I'm big on community. In, in every area from personal life to business and to wellness. Um, I, Janice had taught me about cold plunging and it was something many of you might have heard of Wim Hof. So he had, you know, what's his documentary now? I'm gonna- Oh, Ice, um, the Iceman. The which? The Iceman. Yeah, Superhuman Iceman. Yeah. And I, it was just a buzz that people were talking about and so Janice, um, and her family, especially well, more so your partner, I don't think your kids are <laughs> into this, maybe. Um, yeah. So they would cold plunge in, in a hot tub in their backyard, but filled with cold water. And I said, I'd really love to come and try that. And so I got my partner to come. He hates water, hates anything cold. Like when we go on a ski trip, he, he purchased the whole balaclava and everything. So he'd be completely hidden. So I have a vision of him getting into this tub. 
um, that always brings a smile to my face. But I didn't know at the time when we were going in February on what's the family day, we were going to Janice's house and going to try this cold plunging. I was on the verge of a major depression. I didn't know, I did, I, maybe I knew sort of subconsciously, but I was just burnt out. I was doing too much. So that feeling of parenthood and you're running, keeping everything together, trying to manage who are you, who are your kids, who are your family. So it's all that, um, you know, who are you within it? And there was something that the cold plunging did for me. And now I encourage every person I meet, family and clients and friends, hot, cold showers. So this is so, so easy and can have such a significant effect. So back to the cold plunging, what it was is, Janice, what was the temperature of that water? Oh, it was probably um, 50, 54. Okay. So yeah. it was cold. <laughs> you were going to shriek when you get in it, but yeah. so, so good. And I came to just crave it. I would be jumping, not jumping, walking in like <laughs> with shock into a lake that had ice on it. And there, so you just dunk underwater and sometimes I wouldn't put my head under, but just that act of dunking under and coming up. And it was, it brought something to me to help me get through the journey I was on in that one up that period of time. And, and so it, I always say it, it, you feel rewarded. Like you just, it's kind of like you stopped the path. So you can be caught up in the worry, the, you know, everything that's happening. And so when you're losing your cool, whether it's to an irritability stage or to a like emotional, can't cope, can't function. So I was in that side of it. And the water, the cold water getting it just shocked me into the now. And then I felt rewarded after that I did it. And so it really brought me into the present moment and so what you can do, what my morning routine is now, I cannot get out of my shower until I do that cold blast, even just once, but it's really good if you can do three times. So you'll get into your shower, be nice and warm, maybe for a minute. Then go as cold as you can, really challenge yourself to just whoop, turn it to the coldest side and sit in it. And that will help you practice everything we've talked about today of welcoming and acknowledging, accepting, and then you can turn it back as you're what is it, your action step? Um, and so try that every morning for one week. So a three minute shower, hot, then go cold for 30 seconds, back to hot, back to cold for 30 seconds, back to hot, and then always end on a cold. And you won't, I now don't feel clean until I've done that, until like to step up, I don't feel refreshed or clean until I've done it. So, um, cold hot cold showers and the other part of that is before you get in the shower dry skin brushing so i've brought this is so easy to do too so this is the brush and you're just going to circle your skin on all areas from extremity into your heart so you're creating that flow of movement back to your heart and your heart pumps back out so this is your detoxification pathway of your lymphatics so we're encouraging blood flow i call it sweeping the cobwebs so get everything moving and invigorated and then get into the shower and do your hot cold. And I tell you, I hope you write me and tell me how it's changed <laughs> your week. So, um, well, so Janice, did you have anything to say there? Yeah, no, I, I love what you were saying. I know I keep interjecting here, but okay. I, 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 I loved your description. And, and I think mm -hmm. what you're describing is, a, is an immediate change of state. Mm, yeah. Right? It, that cold water and, and, and that present, it brings you right into presence. Yeah. And also the discomfort of the 60 to 90 seconds mm -hmm. of any emotion that's going to come up anything yeah. in, in your everyday life. So it's the same thing after 60 to 90 seconds, it actually, it's not a big deal anymore. You adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That and, second time when you go back to the yeah. cold, it's just so much more tolerable. Yeah. It feels good. And yeah. same, the same with the unpleasant emotions that, that will arise throughout the day. Yeah. If you, if you let it happen for 60 to 90 seconds, they will, they will leave. It, yeah. This is just so amazing how everything comes together. All of our portions, I would love to keep talking with us. I think this is just the, the foundation of health. And so we will be posting this recording on our YouTube channel and sharing it out. And for anybody who is listening, make sure you um, talk with your family at home and create your three 
guiding contextual rules or guiding lights. Think of your three power words and just start noticing those moments where you can sit in it for 60 to 90 seconds. Maybe it's in your shower, maybe it's in a disagreement with a loved one. Um, and let us know how this helped you. We, you know, we love our sisterhood of health. We are all in this together. We are sisters. And uh, you know, let's be that mom or aunt or whoever walking our whatever in total peace and you know, knowing that we are all connected. And also yeah. get Chantel's book. <laughs> <laughs> yes amazon indigo it's on pretty much any amazon you can you can google it on so yeah it so get it yeah and uh i'm still reading it and just loving it thank you for all your humor and as i said your quirky love of life i you know that's that's a character trait for sure so thank you everyone for joining and stay tuned for our november chat or, or our theme and have a great day everyone Bye. Thanks, Thanks for having so me. Bye. Thanks, everybody.